I guess the uh, the white elephant in the room, pink elephant, or wearing it's black, a, a wearing elephant. a black shirt in the room is is the brand new guy, Lenny. So Lenny, tell us, uh, how's it been in Dether so far? Because this is your first like live performances with him, correct? Yep. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of uh, energy, and uh, that's part of what I bring to the table is the power of energy. really happy and in fact the first show that we played um you know when will departed it was completely amicable he's his priorities are with his family and clearly we don't care about ours so <laughs> uh, um, not true babe <laughs> but um um one of the one of the biggest differences um uh, that even will pointed out was uh linus's uh energy will love to be in the pocket and to just kind of enjoy the music and uh linus uh, probably, I'm assuming enjoys the music, but he also shoves it down everybody's throat up front. It's like, you're not going to get out of this without having a show. And Linus brings it every time. I have to, I feel like I have to step up my game um, or just rely on Linus and I'll just go hang out in the back yeah. and enjoy the music. <laughs> I did notice you hid behind him a couple of times during the show last yeah, night. I too. It is, you know, I, I love intimate shows, but like we talked about before, you don't have room to, to move yeah, around, I you know? That. Like I was they're going like I wish I, there was room for both of us because I know what he's doing behind me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you need a bigger spectrum. Which is unusual bigger, like, for Scott's situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah I usually know what's happening behind me. Oh, I always know. I always know. <laughs> pretends not to. Awesome. Well, um, so pavement. Let's talk about pavement, Mason. We haven't heard much from you, so deal with pavement. Um, just a little bit about how that came about and. And uh, what it's done for you guys so far? Yeah. Uh, our producer and engineer Taz Osterhaus, uh, who worked on all three of these last EPs, um, he connected us uh, through one of his friends in Union Underground, uh, who is also connected with Pavement, and uh, you know they they really like this stuff, and um, you know we we partnered up from there and and it's been great man they they've been good to us and uh they they've really been pushing the record and um you know it's it's the kind of deal um uh, i think that that is outside of the typical industry box that is so bad to most bands it's it's a it's a nice deal and i, I feel like everybody's you know kind of winning on it so so uh the future I heard you guys talking earlier about a, a new album. So how's that? Is how's that going to work out with with pavement? Or have we even thought about that? Or or we have, we haven't even gotten that far ahead. We got to give us a chance to write stuff. Yeah. See the thing. So the the thing is, is you know, uh, it's been three years of just EPs, and a year before that, preparing for the first one, or trying to prepare for that, and getting rid of elements that were kind of uh, impeding that, and getting our rhythm going. Um, so it's been go, go, go. Let us fucking enjoy this for a minute, yeah. okay, sir? I, I don't know. I don't, you know I don't, One more. Yeah. I don't have a lot of uh, a frame of reference in, in, in terms of how other bands work because I've been in this piece of shit for so long. Um, but it's got it, Stockholm it, Syndrome. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, at least to me, it, you know, the... To do three EPs in three years, that that's a you know, and uh, an accompanying tours with those, it's just a lot, man. I mean, it's it's to do the writing and do the pre-production and do the recording and then do the touring and then turn right back around after that cycle and repeat it all mm -hmm. is man, it's it's stressful. It's I mean, the the last uh, the last EP that we did, we literally we're pre-producing um you know a day before we went in the studio and by the time the recording process was done in the studio we were literally driving out of austin on tour and picking up the the freshly still warm pressed cds <laughs> on the, on the way out of town yeah. and so um i'm glad we did it it was very much a, a test i feel like to to you know to do that and maybe for other bands they're like hey bunch of fucking pussies we can do this all day but i mean our our songwriting process is arduous and it's you know I, I tell people it's 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 very much like construction in that it's not just these things just don't come out and they're done it's like you know 
an idea is presented and you know that kind of uh, uh, base layer is, is laid down and then everybody steps all over it and starts you know sticking their three inches and warm mixing <laughs> in there and, and changing it up and, and it takes time to get them to where we we need them to be so we're we're really excited about not having that pressure for the first time in three years and and to be able to kind of come back to it all a little bit more organically and let let those things happen you know how they're going to happen you know with with the now with the volume of, of work that we punched out in that three years it, it gives us some breathing room to go you know we could tour on on this thing for a minute and write um, you know, a little bit more leisurely um, pace so yeah we don't we don't really to this point we don't really uh write together per se in the sense that we don't just like you know get together and like all right guys well i got this rib what y'all think and then you know you you hammer that for 10 minutes and then you think oh well what comes next and then you, you know that sort of you know haphazard way of, of doing things it's like we don't really write together but we arrange together yeah. that's what he's talking the arduous process that's what it is it's yeah. like the riffs are all great. Everybody loves the riffs, but then it's like, well, do we do this two times or four times, or do we cut you know, this piece out? Yeah, you know that other piece? that sort that that sort of thing. It's very much like we don't argue about the art, but we sure as fuck argue about the craft. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's that's and, and the, the next yeah. the next thing that we write. Now we have uh, Linus, and Linus has a long history of his own style of writing and his own music with multiple bands. Um, that is going to further change and add to uh, what we do. So uh, that's something that I'm I'm looking forward to as uh, as as well. Because he's, I mean, he's not your stereotypical bass player. Which uh, at, at least this is what I was sold. Um, <laughs> where you know, just you still have the receipt. <laughs> yeah, where you just come in. Yeah, uh, nine, yeah, yeah, ninety days. <laughs> Uh, where you just come in, you're like, okay, what do you play, and, and then uh, you know follow along with that, or or just write something on on that, which it, he very well can do. But he also writes his his own uh, his own tunes that he'll bring in, and will step on his nuts and make him feel bad about you know you know certain arrangements there and rearrange things just like we do to Tim and Aaron. Yeah. So uh, I fully expect that whatever, because the goal is an LP. The, the 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 hope is an LP, and we'll probably uh, do a vinyl pressing with some bonus tracks with what we have on on this. In between that, that's the, another goal. Um, but uh, I I have a feel I have a feeling that we're going to be inundated with a whole bunch of different uh, pieces of material from um, Linus, Tim, and Aaron, especially, and maybe myself and maybe Mason. Um, but I'm. I just kind of like what's what's happening on the string section right now. So I'm just like, all right, you guys, you go, go for it. Yeah. So uh, that was the music. So let's talk about lyrics. Like where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too bad. Too bad. Where does that come from? Is it all you, or is there is there other influences from the rest of the guys? Or it is. It's mostly me. But like Queen of Steel, which is actually one of my favorite songs lyrically. That was all Mason. Um, Ten thirteen. Yeah, mostly. Mostly, well, and uh, Dos Cuerpos, the first, um, the, the, the first verse came with it, Burial Ground, but um, um, all, all the newer stuff is, is mainly me. I am not opposed to other people bringing in stuff. I, I, I am not a vocalist where I'm like, yeah, I do have to approve the lyrics if, if I don't, if I, if I don't feel like they make sense one way or another, whether rhythmically or you know, emphasizing this syllable on this downbeat just sounds weird. You know, I'll, I'll uh, rearrange some, but I would be perfectly happy. Um, you know, if if these guys came in and they said we wrote a concept album and these are the lyrics, and, uh, and if I was I, like, if I put my stamp on it, I'm totally fine with that. But as far as like where where it comes from, it comes from different places. Um, you know, like Rune's Guard was that—that that was a set of lyrics inspired years ago by, um, you know, by my wife's D and D character, <laughs> Rune's Guard Barbarian. Yeah. And then, um, then I have other things like when uh, he wrote the the Lick to Madness of the Wanderer. Um, he wrote that. Uh, he started playing that, and I and I think we were recording the the scratch tracks from my room. I was like, 
keep playing that because I already know I already know what I'm gonna do with the lyrics. I already know what I'm gonna do, and that shit just came. And then there was and then there's stuff like um, I forget which song it was that uh, it was Casting Stones. I could not figure out the chorus on that. For I was like I can't <laughs> until almost like the last minute. And we even rearranged some stuff and worked on some stuff in the studio. So they come from all over different areas, and sometimes it's like, boom, it's like a lightning bolt, and sometimes it's just like a sloth trudging through molasses in the dead of winter. So That sounds slow. It is. It's all right. Like, it's doom metal. <laughs> doom metal. <laughs> oh, that's the new direction. That's why you don't want to talk about the new album, because they're changing it up. The next to a new song on the LP. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say Actually, the, the, next LP, the next LP is just going to be one song. <laughs> <laughs> one long 90-minute song. Called Molasses. They decided that this song style was not right at all. Right, yeah. <laughs> Triple LP, <laughs> one song. It's just like, we're, ti- we're tired of playing fast all the time. We, we need, you know, it's yeah, awesome. yeah. All right. Mason needs a break. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, let's talk about you. You touched on Mobius Hammersmith um, as, the, as the album and how it's appropriate. Talk to me a little bit about the... The lyrics, because I know it's a character that you you've come up with, and you mentioned the Mobius strip, which is which is the never-ending loop. So, kind of talk to me about the lyrics of that, and then a little bit more about how it connects to y'all's evolution of sound, like you mentioned before. Sure. No, the um, so I love writing in simile and allegory and just painting pictures and not you know not straightforward, and it just it sort of it sort of came to it. it so. Um, we had the art um, pretty early on, and the art for the the cover actually inspired the lyrics to the song. Um, and from that, I, I created this idea of my own character in some undeveloped mythos in my stupid brain, uh, where this this dude is a creator of. Uh, maybe not the universe, but all the goings on in in the universe, and he's uh, he's the creator of war, of peace, of, of uh, all of these things, but never allowing uh, and never allowing his creation to have an end, like a blade. You know, you have you have from hilt to to point, you have an end, but this is more torturous. Then I was like, uh, okay, things about stars and other <laughs> and and poetry. <laughs> And symbolism, symbolism, yes. symbolism. <laughs> Vomit upon the page. <laughs> cool. I always enjoyed your lyrics, even from you know the way back in the early days. Thank you. Way to Poseidon is still probably my favorite song in that whole storyline. So funny thing about that, I hated that song until we made it the title track. It used to be called the Into the Depths, and I was like, ah, oh, this is this is a tough one. Then I was then I uh, I was at work one day not working, and I was like. The weight of Poseidon. That sounds, you know, and that actually fits lyrics. So that that was actually, the, that was not well thought through. And then I emailed the guys. I was like, "How about we do this for the?" Because the the actual title for that uh, album was uh, was more political. It was it was called Target Rich, um, and then it was not. <laughs> and then it was not. <laughs> yeah. Then you had an epiphany. <laughs> then, yeah. So anyway. Awesome. Well, you guys have put out a couple of badass videos on these on these. Uh, well, videos too. Not those videos, though. I'm talking about the ones that are on YouTube. That's on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> That's on black tube, you know. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about... Yeah, we went somewhere dark with that. Dark and deep. Dark and deep with that. That's not no long... Yeah, yeah, a little more than three inches. Talk to me a little bit about uh, Rune Scarred, the newest video, which is fucking awesome, by the way. Thank you. Seeing the de- decapitation is just... That's just <laughs> Fucking Mason's head's gone. <laughs> Tyler, as Tyler was pitching the concept to me, he said, Mason gets his head cut off. I said, done. done. <laughs> I don't care what it is. <laughs> so, uh, Take my money. <laughs> was it all his idea or was it a collaboration of you guys or did he come to you with this idea? Like, How, how did the whole video concept come about? It was a collaboration, but really it was... Uh, what can we fit in this budget and make it look as cool as possible? So, um, Tyler is a, a, an incredibly talented uh, director, and in fact, I'm stoked to be working with him. We, he and I just finished a short film uh, that I that I produced and, and he directed called Shiloh. And um, so, he and I with the uh, with the Runescard video, I I produced it with him, and um, 
quickly put it together. It was like, you know, we had this idea, and pie in the sky sort of stuff that we wanted to do, um, and then it just boiled down to, well, what do we have access to? Um, and the, the whole idea was uh, to have some sort of shaman type character, and we always love strong female characters, so, um, uh, you know, we had a good character in Redneck Dragon Slayer, so now let's make you know, a, a, a beautiful chick who's not beautiful, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like evil and gnarly and stuff, but Kari's so pretty, it was, it, she still wasn't as gnarly as I wanted her to be, <laughs> but, uh, but she was awesome. And in fact, about that, we had somebody else who dropped out at uh, four o'clock that morning. I had, the, I had the email, four o'clock that morning. I can't do it, my, my mom's in the hospital. So I called Aaron, Kari's, uh, his then fiance, now wife. Right. And I was like, Aaron, can Kari do this? And um, and he's like, hold on, let me roll over and ask her. And then five minutes later, yeah. So now that you've got you know capable people who who already got a plan, and, you know, it, it 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 was all kind of a surprise, and it was also a surprise, you know, seeing the the completed uh, deal, because you know even you know I, I didn't look at the storyboards, I just went in there and you know got my head cut off when I was told and um, you know you get kind of a loose idea of what the finished product looks like but it, it almost kind of gives you a, a fan's perspective um, when when you're out of that loop and then you see the finished thing and you're like oh wow this really is awesome you know yeah. I, I had the uh, I had the easiest part because I I was dead to begin yeah, with yeah. In yeah. the video and because I remember uh, you know Devin had you know emailed around the, the script or whatever and like I, I, I looked you know I looked at it and I didn't really see my name anywhere so I'm like uh, perhaps this was an oversight from the committee. <laughs> no it was on purpose yeah and then I show up and they're like oh no you're just you just need to lie down and you're dead to start with I'm like oh this is even better <laughs> cool did, we, did we tell you how we determined the order of who was gonna die uh, it was based on uh, um, who, who, no, no, it was based on who we thought would be more awkward on camera up to who would feel more comfortable doing shit on camera. Yeah. So we figured you probably wouldn't be, you wouldn't feel very comfortable, so you would be dead at the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> my, uh, yeah, my uh, you know, my, it, my, any, any, act, any acting chops I may have had have long since abandoned me, having not been practiced since high school. But, uh, so, no, I was, I was fine with it. Uh, we'll step you up for the next one. <laughs> no, please don't. Yeah. I just want to be dead all the time. <laughs> in every video. Awesome. Well, the videos have been enjoyable as from the fan perspective, for sure. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. I know it's going to kick ass. And if it doesn't kick ass, then you're never invited back to my house. Yeah. The rest of these guys can come, I but not you. I didn't realize we were invited in the first place. <laughs> we just kind of walked in. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. You did break into my house. <laughs> So, speaking of breaking into houses, the rest of the tour, how's it going to go? I know, terrible segue. Yeah. Uh, it Wonderfully. <laughs> so you say. Yeah, it's, it, I, I expect it to be a, a blast. I mean, it, you what's, know, what's the run? Let's, let's start with that. What's um, So, basically, we're making our way through the Midwest up to uh, Boston, then down northeast and into the south and back home. You guys have been touring a lot, so uh, Lennis, are you ready for the for the touring road dog that that Earth politics is? How's how's touring been so far? Oh yeah, it's been good from the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't let you drove, drive yet, have they? I'm take care of that today. <laughs> <laughs> they give you the long drive, right? Of course, yeah. to break you in. Yeah, we give him the long drive. He's still needs to earn his place. <laughs> Awesome. Well, like I said before, you guys have really been been touring a lot on these EPs. How has that been as far as, um, I know we've seen experiences that you guys have had on Facebook, so what's what's been the highs and the lows of the touring the last couple of years? Man. We'll go with Mason. Uh, you always get tested on tour. Um, I was telling somebody the other day, it's like, um, it, it's, it's just a, brutal thing and you get done and then you want to do it again and you don't really know why um, for yeah like, yeah having that crack addiction right <laughs> yeah. um, certainly the you know the the last tour I guess it was we were in Alabama staying with some some very good folks and Tim made a comment being a Yankee carpetbagger that he had, he had <laughs> never shot a gun and and uh, 
the ears perked up. From yeah, the, our, our hostess was like, who's yeah, never yeah. who's never shot a gun around here? And she, <laughs> and she comes out of the house, you know, uh, arms to the teeth. And <laughs> Tim got to shoot his first gun. That that was pretty entertaining. That's it, you know that that face that most people who shoot a gun for their first time have, where they're they're very concentrated and trying to figure it out, and they shoot, and then the, their face kind of lights up. And they're like, this is awesome. <laughs> But then it was only like a day or two after that we played in uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, had a great show. Um, and we were staying about an hour outside of town, and and uh, Tim was damn near sober, but he stepped out of the van, misty up there in the mountains, and slipped off the the rail on the van, and uh, kind of fell face first on the concrete. And I was getting out right as he was getting out, and I was like, he was laying there going, oh. And I was like, is it your hands? And he was like, no, it's my ankle. And I was like, good. <laughs> uh, and I was like, well, here, let me help you up. And he goes, no, oh, just let me lay here for a minute. So, so Will and I get down there and start looking at him. You know, the ankle bends like this, right? right yeah. And he's laying on kind of on his side. <laughs> and Will picks up his leg, and his ankle is bending at this Ooh. angle. Um and it was very obviously broken at that point. Uh, so uh, Aaron and I, uh, we, we all helped him up, got him into the van. Everybody else went to the hotel we were staying and, and kind of got lodging secured. Aaron and I took him to the, the nearest hospital in Shelbyville. And uh, they were not set up to deal with it. Tim started going into shock almost immediately in the, uh, in the van, and we got him covered up with everything that we could find, pillows and towels and all that, and he, he kind of got a little bit more stable at that point. Got him to the uh, to the ER there, and they, they got him completely stable, but they weren't set up to, to deal with him. I mean, none of us are. Uh, <laughs> and, and so they had to transport him to, to back to Louisville, um, and, he, and we had two days off. We had Tuesday, Wednesday off. We were in Louisville Monday night. Uh, he had emergency surgery and had a you know titanium rod put in his leg from the knee down to the ankle and some plates and pins and all of that shit. And Aaron and I stayed there the whole time, and of course Tim out of surgery in that hospital gown. I've seen more of his dick and balls than I ever need to again. Um, I love you, Tim, but I don't love but your I junk. Hate your dick and balls. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, and we were all like, well, what the fuck are we going to do? You know, is this, are we going to just cut this one short? And man, Tim was a fucking trooper, right? You know, I, bands have folded on way less on a tour, and uh, we didn't miss a single date on that oh, tour. Uh, we, we went to Guitar Center uh, and uh, <laughs> picked up a, uh, a, a drum throne for him, and, you know, he was literally wrapped from, from the thigh down to the tips of his toes, and... Uh, I don't know why I ended up being his fucking nurse the whole time, but because not it. Yeah, I guess so. I drew the shortest straw on that one, but um, he didn't miss a show. We propped him up, and he was all hopped up on Vicodin, and and uh, he, he sat there and and uh, just tore ass the whole way through the rest of the tour. Also played guitar really well. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it's actually no. It was it was it was, it was my it, they were my best shows performance wise because. You know, I had nothing else to do but focus exactly on what I was doing. Yeah. I didn't have to worry about, you know, some of the other, you know, ballet choreography that I you know, <laughs> sometimes do on stage. But, yeah. I was going to ask, do you remember the rest of the tour at all with the, with the drugs you were on? I just watched the videos online. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was, I was fairly, fairly loose. Well, the thing was is that, it, you know, the the pills weren't. It doesn't. I mean, I, I didn't. I, I didn't drink the rest of the tour, yeah. so like you know, it was kind of eh, like no. right, you know. But uh, no, I, I mean, I had a great time. To me, it's just like you know, it's 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 so it's so much fun, and it's it, it's just just like an, an, a, a, a great honor to play just about anywhere. Um, so like you know, we had the shows booked. Like why you know. What the hell is I gonna do? Like I already taken the time off of work. Like when I'm just gonna go home, sit at home, be miserable, or, or just it, you know, all yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I might, might, as well, might as well might as well do that. But um, no, I mean, I, I it's it's still you know got got to some places that we've never been to, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, you know made some new fans here and there, and uh, and 
you know, that's that's really all there is to it. I mean, you know, fuck it. You only got so many, only got so many days and nights to to, to do this sort of thing. So, you gotta you gotta do it when you can. Yeah. So. Very true. Very true. Excellent, boys. Well, where can we find Moby's Hammersmith, Queen of Steel, Men Become Gods, and yeah. everything else? It's already in my heart, but you can't buy it out of my well, heart. Uh, you can, you can damn near killed him. <laughs> Moby's Hammersmith uh, on uh, on iTunes and uh, and Men Become Gods on on iTunes and uh, Amazon. You um, you can um, you can get all the physical stuff off of. Uh, well, you can come to our damn shows first off, please. Um, and you can also get them off our uh, Bandcamp page, which is deadearthpolitics.bandcamp.com, um, or you can just go to deadearthpolitics.com and plenty of links to that page make it easier for you. Excellent. Any last comments, Devin? Uh, so many, but they're all incriminating. So. That's unfortunate. Mason. I got nothing, man. <laughs> uh, just uh, that we're, we're excited that we're, we got this thing. Uh, we literally have the show on the road, and, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, got a, got a couple fun and exhilarating weeks ahead of us. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Lynn. We'll see you at the show. Yeah. Hey. Skunk. <laughs> I hate that earth politics. <laughs> but, but I hate that earth politics. <laughs> and on that, we're out. Catch dead earth politics on the road in your stereos. Later. <laughs>